Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at the new Meta Transformer. So this is a unified framework for multi-model learning. It is basically just a model where we can have different inputs to the model. It will encode both images, text, speech, uh, point clouds, IMU data, uh, time series data, table data, and so on. So they're basically just creating a single model that can take in multiple inputs and make it into the same embedding space. Then you can do like detection, classification, and all those different kind of tasks. A lot of research is actually like going into multi-model learning. So this is research towards a general model that can do pretty much like all the tasks on various domains. So now we're going to jump into the project page. We're going to go through it, see some examples and also what the model does. Then we're going to jump in and see the GitHub repository together with their paper. So most of the things is actually like here on the project page. So yeah, here we can see that we can go in to see the paper, supplementary, code, archive, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and so on. But this is basically the idea behind the meta transformer. So this is just a single backbone based on the transformer architecture. Again, we have all these different types of inputs from various domains that can now be the input to this single model. So now we can take 2D vision, 3D vision, so we can actually like both have um, images, point clouds, medical applications, IMU data, so inertial measurements um, from sensors. We can have hyperspectrum, graphs, time series data, table, spatial, temporal video here, nighttime, thermal and sensors as well, so we have infrared sensors as well. Being input this model, sound, speech, audio and NLP. So the idea behind this is that we can just take an arbitrary input, encode the input into a feature space. Then we can take those features and apply that to various different projects and applications. So that could either be like fine tuning it on 2D images, point clouds, and so on. So here we can see all the modalities, image, point cloud. Um, we can also read the abstract here. So we already went over that. So this is just a quick drawing over the architecture for this meta transformer. We have the unified multi-model model as the backbone. And then we have this data to sequence tokenizer. So this is actually like the most important thing from this research paper and how we can actually like have this multi-model learning. So the transformer is actually like just a standard transformer. It is more how can we actually like get our data into the same space and into the same tokenizer. Because once we have the tokenizer, we actually like have the data in the same space and then we can feed that into our transform model and then basically just train on that. So to just have data, different data to sequence tokenizer depending on the data that you throw into the model and then the output will be this semantic embedding. So that could either be like um, RGB image, graph analysis, um, autonomous driving, activity recognition, censoring, all those different kind of things. So these are the multiple like applications and projects that it can be applied on when we, when we basically just fine tune it on specific heads for specific tasks. They also have a video presentation here going over um, how it works. Here we can see a bit more details about the meta transformer architecture. We have these different types of inputs. We have our data to sequence to tokenizer, and then we can see we have this shared token space. So the main objective is to get the data into the exact same space, and then we can just feed that into our model and then apply different heads on top of that. So let's just jump straight down to the tokenizer. So these are the different tokenizers for the different types of inputs. So we both have our meta scheme here, text tokenizer, image tokenizer, point tokenizer, and audio tokenizer. So these are just some of the most important ones um, that we act like using for real life applications. So in the case of images, for example, let's just go over a couple of examples. They have different types of embeddings or like tokenizers. So basically how to take the raw input and then how does it act like tokenize that data into the exact same um, output representation. So in the case of images, we actually like start with patchifying it as in the standard like visual transformer architecture where we basically just divide our images into patches. So we just take like small uh, patches of our image. We can also call them tiles. And then after that, we just have like a symbol like S by S convolutional layer here. And then here we basically just have each patch, then we flatten it and combine it. And then th that is how we generate this um, token for our images. For text, we take our sentences and then we have this parsing. So we basically just divide it into subworks. Then we will have our projection. So this is basically for the standard transform model that we went over in the previous videos and also on the courses that I have on my channel. So I actually like have courses where we dive fully into the transform architecture, how we can implement it from scratch. We go over the research paper, how we can have it on one side, the research paper with the model architecture and how can we implement it on the other side in raw PyTorch. So this is basically just a projection, a linear projection or some kind of like projection that we are learning while training. So we just get it into like an embedding space. Then we have a one by one convolution and then we flatten it at the end. 
And then down here at the bottom, like we can see in this yellow part, it is act like when we have combined and tokenized our input into the exact same space. When we have it in the exact same space, we will basically just have numbers. Then we can basically just throw those numbers into our transform architecture, train the model, and then we can apply it on various domains. Then when we actually want to use it in an application or project, we will need to use the exact same tokenizer as the pre-processing step to our model, feed our embedding into a model or a token into a model, and then we can actually like create our own custom projects and applications based on this meta transformer. Here we can see some of the experiments that they've done. Let me just zoom out here so you guys can better see what's going on. And they also compared to some of the other models that has been trained. Here we can see that they compared with a modality specific state of the art and also image bind. We can see that meta transformer, it acts like does a pretty good job on on pretty much like all the domains here, we can see that the modality specific state of the art is still um, is still a bit better compared to the meta transformer. So here we can see all the tables. You can just go through it if you're interested in looking into the results. So the most important thing here that I want to show you guys is that we can take arbitrary data, could be images, point clouds, audio, text, whatever, and then just throw it into a model, tokenize the input, throw it into a large transform model, and then we can apply it hit on top of that for classification, point cloud classification, segmentation, image segmentation, audio classification, and all those different kind of tasks. So here towards the end, let's just jump straight into the GitHub repository. They have also released their code. I'm going to show you in another video how we can use this meta transformer in our own code and applications. So definitely hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. So this acts like a really cool model. We're, we're probably going to create a lot of videos with the meta transformers in the future. Just try to take different types of input data, throw it into the meta transformer and see what we can actually do with it. Let's just scroll through it here. We can see that they have released all the code for X-ray, time series, point cloud image, and so on. We can also see the exact same figures, drawings, and so on as we just went over on their project page. So let's just zoom in here and actually see that they compare uh, their model with different types of model trying to do this multi-model learning. So here we can see the different modalities that different like methods are actually capable of. So we can just see the standard transformers. It is based on text. We can also see the shared parameters and also unpaired data if we can both use unpaired data or if we need paired data. And also if we can share parameters between different modalities, we can see the visual transformers, the tr twin transformers, um, MAE, it can only do on vision, point transformers, of course that will be on point cloud, uh, PCT, point, also point VIT. We can see here where we have some audio models. We also have the clip flamingo um, and those different kind of methods, which is basically just text and image pairs. So this is actually like for image understanding and generating images based on text. So clip models are actually like used for generating AI art. We also have the BEIT model, image bind, which has a bit more modalities. So the meta transformer here, it can take in like pretty much all the modalities that we need for now. We can see that here we can actually like share parameters, like we can share several layers for this BERT model, but with all the other models here, we can really share the parameters between different domains, which is the case for our meta transformers. So we can take the whole backbone and then just share all the parameters between different um, domains. So the unpaired data here is also really important because like in most cases, we actually like have unpaired data um, where with this meta transformer, we can also use it on unpaired data. So we can just take some arbitrary data in arbitrary domain, throw it into this backbone here with our meta transformer, and then we'll actually like be able to extract the features. But let's just scroll down here. We might actually like be able to see their model zoo, as you can see here. So open source modality agnostic models. So we have this meta transformer um, B16 and also L14. We see that this is actually like the base model. They also have a large model. They're around, they have around 85 um, million parameters here and also 300 million parameters. So this is still a, like a fairly small model compared to if you're talking large language models, which is like 7, 13, 1500 billion parameters. So we can also do a demo of use for the pre-trained encoder. You can both like use the pre-trained. We can also fine tune it later on, but this is basically like how we can run it, but we will definitely test this out in future videos. So stay tuned for that. So we can see the to-do list here, meta transformer with large language models. So that will actually be pretty cool combining large language models together with meta transformers. Just imagine that you can have this meta transformer in the first layer. Then you just take an arbitrary input, you embed it into a single space, and then you can combine that with a large language model. So again, right now with ChatGPT and all those language models, it is basically based on text. But imagine that you can just take a video, throw it into the large language model, 
just tell it to analyze it, rank it, or whatever you want to do with it. Or if you have some time series data, go in, filter the data, sort my data, maybe go in and train a, a neural network based on my data here, or like a smaller model that can run real-time inference specifically on a specific task. So this could actually be pretty crazy if they combine this meta transformer with large language models. So motor model joint training with meta transformers would also be pretty cool and just support more modalities and more tasks. So this is pretty awesome. I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited to test it out in our own code and basically just try to see what it's capable of. If we can take different types of input data, throw it into a model, let's see what we can get out. So stay tuned for that video. I hope to see you in there. Bye for now.